Divorced, beheaded, died. Divorced, beheaded, survived. You've probably heard this rhyme before about King Henry VIII of England and his infamous six wives. My name is Abigail Bradford, and for my informative speech today, I will be telling you the exciting story of how Henry VIII went from being a typical strong medieval king to being the king whose six marriages overshadow basically any other policy he made or action he took during his reign in the early 16th century. I hope you will enjoy to I hope you will enjoy what I consider to be a truly thrilling story as you learn about why Henry had such a motivation to marry over and over again and what his second wife Anne Boleyn did that makes her stand out at a time when women were admired for being silent and following what the men in their lives told them to do. So King Henry VIII is known for his six wives, but how did this pattern of divorcing and beheading his wives begin? We can go back to the mid-1520s when the king had been married to his first wife, Catherine of Aragon, for almost 20 years, and they had only one living child, their daughter Mary. This was not normal or expected for medieval kings, who hoped to have an heir and a spare, or at least two healthy sons, early on into their life. This provides them with the security that they need to keep their claim to the throne. Henry's father, Henry Tudor, or Henry VII, had established the Tudor dynasty through a distant claim of his mother's. If you'd like to know more about this, I suggest researching the Wars of the Roses, which was a very complicated dynastic battle between multiple families who claimed to each be the rightful rulers of England. While this is very interesting, I do not have the time to explain that in this speech. The important thing is that Henry needed an heir and a spare, and Catherine had not given that to him, and he was very tired of that. While it's not admirable, it was common for medieval kings to have many mistresses. Henry was no different. In fact, we have historic proof of at least three of his mistresses with whom he had children with, uh, while he was married to Catherine. One of those children was a healthy boy, but he was illegitimate, so he could not be Henry's heir. Um, however, to Henry, this meant it wasn't his problem. He could have a son, it just had to be with the right woman. But who was the right woman? Henry believed it to be one Anne Boleyn. Anne had been living in France for most of her life and moved back to England around 1520. Henry quickly became infatuated with her and asked her to be his mistress until he could marry her. Anne was a witty, intelligent Tudor woman. She was very attractive and very different from many other women of her time. Most women of this time had fair skin and blonde hair and blue eyes, and this was considered to be the beauty standard. Anne differently enough, had darker olive skin, dark hair, dark eyes, and even had a sixth finger. Um, she was just as politically savvy as many men in the royal court at the time, and she skillfully used Henry's infatuation with her to her advantage. She refused to have any sexual relations with him until they could be legally and lawfully married, um, despite promising him on her own life that she would be the woman to give him a son. This was a risky move for her. Being a mistress to the king um, was nothing light. These women were given jobs in the court, typically servants to the queen, and were given generous allowances throughout their life. Rejecting that offer from the king was no small thing. By doing so, Anne risked alienating her family from, the, from their upper class status and risked them losing their good favor what they had with the king, which was only truly given to very few families at this time. However, virtually nothing could have motivated Henry more than this. He went to great lengths to annul his marriage to Catherine. When he was denied an annulment from the Pope, he left the Catholic Church, started his own church instead, and required every citizen of England to be a member of it. This was a really big deal for Henry because he was very faithful to the Catholic Church and was even considered and named Defender of the Faith by the Pope himself. This was a messy and complicated time in English history, which again, I'm not able to go into full detail of in this speech. But from the disorganization of the Church of England came the marriage of Henry VIII and Anne Boleyn in 1533, six years after Henry had initially asked Anne to be his mistress. They married in a secret ceremony in January of 1533, and in September of that same year, Anne gave birth to their first child, a healthy baby girl. So Anne and Henry's marriage was certainly not the sunshine-filled life they expected it to be. After failing to give Henry a son, just as Catherine had done, Anne was beheaded after being found guilty of committing adultery against the king. Whether this really happened is very much up to debate, and there's very much research that 
people have done for 500 years on this. However, this is truly a thrilling story which I wish I could tell you more about, but we have now reached the end of my speech. I hope you have enjoyed learning about who I consider to be two of the most influential and interesting figures in European history, King Henry VIII and his second wife, Anne Boleyn.